Hi lads, welcome back to my team career mode to a normal length race this time. Um, the Hungarian Grand Prix. One of these days I'm gonna get a my team video out, not late as hell. But today's not that day. I'm blaming the Australian Grand Prix. And that's the story, and that, that's the excuse I'm sticking to. But last time out, Austria, episode 100, 100% race. And it was won by Leclerc. We started 10th, finished 3rd with the fastest lap. Gasly 2nd. Um, Leclerc very much has absolutely 100% inserted himself into that championship fight. We're just back there as well. It's about 16 points back or so, I think. Um, looking at when these upgrades are coming in from Ferrari, 20, the 19th and 27th of 29th of November. So it's going to be quite a while before we get our engine upgrades. Those final two engine upgrades from Ferrari coming in. Um, we're quite well to wait till the next race course because we're not doing Silverstone this season. So we've got quite a sizable gap until the next race, you know, like three weeks time in game, 23 days. It's quite a while, um, but either way, Hungary, a track we've not been to since season two and a track that historically I don't go that well in Hungary. So this may end up being Spain without the S. It's entirely up to you. So we're just going to see how this episode goes, how this race goes. I'm not expecting too much, to be honest. Because, yeah, I, as I said, historically this is a track I don't go all that well at. On any F1 game. I've never really gone well in Hungary. I've always struggled at this track. I have a feeling this race might not be that much different. But to be honest, in my mind, this race, it was a bit for the race between Austria and Belgium. It was bit well, it was between putting hung putting going to Hungary or going to Zandvoort, and I didn't want to go to Zandvoort. Maybe next season, I don't know. Um, but I ended up going to Hungary. We've got Carlos Sainz announcing his retirement at the end of the season. Big shock that huge surprise that Carlos Sainz retiring at the end of this season. He's hanging up his steering wheel and. That has just opened up one of the most coveted seats in Formula 1. One of the best seats on the grid. And no rain, by the way. No rain, and we are back to 20%, 50% races. But Carlos Sainz, after, um, well, how many seasons in Formula 1, is um, retiring out of the sport. Mercedes bringing in some um, upgrades to their engine for not only themselves, but also McLaren and Aston, uh, McLaren and Williams. Sorry, Aston Martin not getting those upgrades. Maybe, maybe Aston Martin got those upgrades earlier in the season. Maybe that's what it is, because Aston Martin had a similar trajectory earlier on in the season. They used a Mercedes power unit, and they didn't have an upgrade there. So maybe the upgrade that's just come into Mercedes, Aston, uh, Mercedes, McLaren, and Williams is an upgrade that Mercedes trialed with Aston Martin earlier in the season. They've seen it's good, and they've now put it into their own cars. We're getting a little bit twitchy on the exit of turn five, I think that is. Um, as we're here in Q1, just trying to get through this edge. Just trying to get through to Q2, missing the apex there. As we've now got the final two pedals of the corners. I was complaining about these corners on Twitter earlier. Because honestly, God, how do you go through them without losing a butt fuck of time? Sainz goal is setting the pace on a 1 minute 12 flat. Um, we're going off the track as we come across the line of 113.7. We're 1.7 down on Sainz. And it's not him on provisional pole at the moment. I think it might be Leclerc. I'm, I'm I say provisional pole. Fastest overall in Q1. We're in 21st at the moment. That's all I know. Um, and we're up by about one tenth but through the first sector as things stand at the moment. Trying to just get out of the session. Because at the moment, we're two tenths up on Latifi. And that would still be pretty... I think we would we'd make it into the top 16. But it would be very, very close. We head now... Through the chicane at the top of the hill. Um, three tenths gained. We need to gain about a second on this lap to maybe be safe. Is my thinking. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait and see. We're heading through the rest of sector two now. Turn 11, I think that is. I might be wrong. I'm not too sure on the corner numbers here in Hungary. We're up by about nine tenths of a second. As we come through the final corner. We lost a bit of time. We're gaining it back on the exit. The DRS open. We come across the line. Go P13 with a 1 minute 12.8. Leclerc goes quickest, but unfortunately, that time that I thought it would be safe, not safe. Unfortunately, I were 21st. I knew this... R Look, my expectations coming into this race for myself were low. But holy fuck. 
Um, yeah, I, I always struggle in Hungary, but my god, I didn't, I expected not quite as bad as that. But I mean, sometimes this is just the hand you get dealt, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, maybe this is going to be one of those races where we end up struggling a bit, you know, we can come back through the through the field with maybe a good strategy, we'll see what happens in the race. Um, our team, uh, 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 Seb Vettel is through, so Seb's through, so that's what all the counts, hopefully he can get as high up in the grid as possible. Um, for us, and maybe, and, you know, maybe aim for a podium, but let's head to the grid. It's race day in Budapest as we get ready for another round of the Formula One World Championship. We don't expect too many retirements at this track. There are plenty of current and former drivers with flawless finish rates here. In particular, Ralf Schumacher. He made it across the line in all 10 of his Hungarian Grand Prix starts. 14 corners then for our drivers to navigate at the 2.7 mile Hungaro ring today. It's six lefts and eight rights around a lap here with average speeds in the region of 120 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. Why don't we talk about Ferrari? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Pierre Gasly lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Sergio Perez, and Norris, Hamilton, Ocon, Fernando Alonso, and Yuki Tsunoda, Matsushita, Sainz, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Eilert, Mick Schumacher, Lundgaard, George Russell, and Jack Aitken, Stroll, Latifi, the owner driver, and Nikita Mazepin. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. Cheers, Jeff. Don't mind me, I'm trying to put my phone on charge while I'm talking here. I realize I need to charge my phone, um, but strategy, gonna be a one stop from us. Um, as you'd expect, my phone's on charge at saying six hours. For fuck's sake, phone, make up your mind. Gonna be a one stop. I'm not too sure about going onto the hard. I'd, pr I'd rather go onto the soft, so all things could, um, to be fairly honest with you on that one. There we go, that's better than saying two hours. Bingo, phone's on charge. Um, but one stop is what it's gonna be. A grid penalty for science, maybe, by the looks of it. Um, well, I would definitely say grid penalty starting on the soft there in 12. The top nine all on soft compound tires and science. So basically the drivers are qualified in the top 10 are all on soft tires. Everybody else on the grid. Oh. Pardon me is on medium tires, including ourselves. I'm not too sure about go going on to the hard tires for the second stint. Maybe go on to the goal line, go on to the soft. We're having to see what happens on strategy. Five lights ahead of us in Budapest. They're out very quickly. It was not a long hold. We are racing in Budapest. It's a good start for us as we make our way into the slipstream as Latifi. We're heading down towards turn one. It's a long run. And there's crash in the back. Someone's lost the front wing. We're diving it down the inside. We're four wide with the Toro also and the two Alfa Romeos making contact with uh, one of them as we file back in behind on the run to cut down towards turn number two, we dive down the inside, it's uh, Carlos Sainz, he's slow, he's lost his wing, there goes Jack Aitken back through, we go over on the outside of Sainz, what a star it's been from us, from 21st to 11th, in two corners, what a start, but Max Verstappen, got away well, he leads, Pierre Gasly, the championship leader is in second, Charles Leclerc is third, Sebastian Vettel holds fourth, and Sergio Perez in fifth, Lando Norris sixth, Fernando Alonso seventh, Lewis Hamilton, Eighth of uh, Hamilton, uh, ahead of Hamilton. Then we've got Alcon ninth and eight can rounding at the top ten. We're in eleventh ahead of Science, who has lost his front wing. What a start from us! Wait, what was that like? Ten, nine, ten position positions gained. We went from twenty-first to eleventh in two corners. But good, just a clean getaway from Verstappen there. Um, Gasly able to keep it ahead of Leclerc, who was coming under a little bit of pressure from Vettel there, who managed to. Can't quite get ahead of his former teammate, but can stay ahead of his other former teammate. This is science. 
Back started 12, got a good getaway, better than Sonoda, pulling ahead, gaining one place already. Now down towards turn one, it's into the back of the the Toro Rosso. I think that's Matsushita. Um, I think it was Matsushita, I think. That was us four wide with Giovinazzi Aitken and um, Matsushita there. This is what it looked like from Yuki Sonoda. You can see, oh no, that's Callum Eilat. Sorry, no, that was Matsushita. That was Matsushita. Um, four white. Oh, there's a bit of contact there with Eilat between uh, Sonoda there as well. And then here we dive it back down the inside. More contact made. And Aitken just swoops around the outside to go up into P10. And we get past Sainz to be in P11. So good start from us, all things considered. Uh, but I think we might have damage. We might. We'll Going see. Front wing. It'll need replacing if it takes too much damage. Yep, yeah, damage. Oh, of course, of course. Um, but the car doesn't feel so bad, so I'm actually going to stay out. Because it doesn't feel so bad. I'm going to see how it feels over the next few laps. And to when I go into the pits, I, I can't even... It's like Monaco a couple seasons ago. I, there's damage, but I cannot see the damage. So I'm not going to change the wing. I'll just put the angle up as that was a puff of smoke from the back of Sainz's Ferrari. He's having problems in that car. He had a great penalty. He lost his front wing. He's in last. And now he's out of the race. He just announced his retirement. And he's uh, retiring from this race, ironically enough. Carlos Sainz out of the race while his teammate, and who's the leader of the championship, is in second uh, behind Max Verstappen. Got 1.2 second lead. And I got no other changes, it's all as you were down the grid. We're about three seconds back from Aitken at the moment. Car is still feeling good. Little bit understeering in a couple of corners. You can see maybe a little bit of understeer there on the way in. Um, but I'm just, I'm not going to change the wing. I'm not going to lose time at the pit stop by changing it, you know? Um, I'll just put the wing angle from, te I'm running 10, 11 on the wings. I'm just going to put the front wing up to, te up to 11. I did that at Monaco and it freaking and it worked a treat because I had wing damage but then didn't change the wing for Stappen on la at the end of lap 6 into the pit lane he's the first one to blink up top the race leader and Gasly takes over the ladies medium tires for Verstappen he's two stopping unless he's going to do an absolute freaking worldy on tire management and go to the end now where will Verstappen go can we be ahead of him I wonder I think yes we can be ahead of him. So we do get ahead of Verstappen. Of course, he's on fresher tires, but uh, t to be honest, we're not really racing him. But at the same time, I've all, on this race weekend, I've already been a bit of an asshole to him in practice. Uh, you can read about that on my Twitter. Gasly's into the pit lane. Leclerc stays out. We're being, a, we're being an asshole to Max Verstappen right now. Um, Gasly's in, Vettel's in, what tires is going to be going on, Perez is in as well in the Red Bull, it's hard tires for Gasly, he's running to the end of this race, so um, Verstappen on the two, two stop, Gasly and Vettel on the one stop, I think Perez might be on mediums as well, Verstappen's attacking us, here comes Gasly out the pit lane, I'm going to dive it back up the inside of Verstappen to defend the position, I don't need to do this, I just fancy being a bit annoying. Um, Gasly's come out just behind Verstappen, maybe has a chance to maybe get past him, even, as um, Vettel's out of the pits in P10 there. Back with his, Vers Gasly, round the back of Verstappen, can he get a move done? He's looking for the move, he's looking for the move up towards turn four, can he get it done? Not quite, Verstappen squeezes him out on the exit. It's as you were, Leclerc still leading. And I'll tell you what, this might have to be helping Leclerc out. A right three. I might have to be doing a massive favor to my former teammates here. Am I trying to? No. I'm just, I just fancy having a, look, my chance of, I admit my chance of scoring points might be slim or it'll be the lower end of the points. I just fancy having a bit of fun. And that fun just so happens to be annoying the AI as Leclerc is into the pit lane. What tires are going to be? It is going to be the hard compound tires. So Leclerc getting held a little minute there. He is mirroring his championship rival Pierre Gasly. Who um, is getting held up by this as well. I just... Well, you can read about me annoying Verstappen on, tw on Verstappen's AI on Twitter. Leclerc out the pit lane. Leclerc is in the lead of the race. He's in the net P1. Verstappen is on the inside. There's a little bit of contact, but no damage done. Leclerc, as we've helped him out massively. 
He's made the overcoat work thanks to us as being an arsehole to Max Verstappen. Look at that, I just fancy having a bit of fun. My chance of scoring points are probably going to be slim. So I just fancy having a little bit of fun here. And that, like I said, that fun just so happens to be annoying the AI. Because, damn it, they've annoyed me enough. It's, uh, Karma's a bitch. Karma is a right bitch. Again, you can read about me annoying Verstappen on Twitter. But back to the action. We're just... This isn't my race, but I don't care. Leclerc is in net P1. I think Esteban Ocon is in the actual race lead at the moment. Um, the man who won this race last year, you can see Aitken is up in the second. There's an Alpine in the pit lane, you can see on the mini-map, that's Alcon going to be into the pit lane. I thought Vassap was going to have a little look at the 12 or 13 or whatever corner that is, but he couldn't quite get it done. Um, so he's still behind us, but he's going to have DRS. Whether he can make a move or not, I'm not too sure. He's backed up a little bit. So he's still within a second. He'll have DRS Alcon into the pit lane, onto the hard tires. He's running to the end. Aitken takes the bloody lead of the race. Jack Aitken is leading the fucking Hungarian Grand Prix, running long. On the medium compact cars, that might this that strategy might actually really work out for Aitken, you know? Depending on how many drivers are doing the two stop. Verstappen is, Perez is as well. Verstappen and Perez both on mediums at the moment. They will not run to the end, but Verstappen's looking for um, a third place in this race. Leclerc has already checked out at the thick end of four seconds. Thanks to us just being annoying. Pardon me. As um, we've gotten a bit of a gap to Verstappen from him, from him looking, he's kind of hurt himself for going down this main straight. He will still have DRS, but he's not close. He's not going to be close enough to go for a move in the turn one or try for a move. The beauty of this track being difficult to overtake on. The absolute beauty of this track being difficult to overtake on. You can do this and get away with it because it's difficult to overtake. Oh my God, what am I like? To be honest, I think this entire, like, Hungarian GP in Season 6 weekend is just confirming that I am a fucking asshole. Um, but Verstappen down the inside, trying again, having to file back in behind. Um, for the time being, he still cannot get that move done. He is trying every single trick in the book that he knows of. But he cannot quite get it done. And I'll tell you what, Gasly is closer to Verstappen than Verstappen is to me. And Gasly's going for it down the main straight. He's trying to go for what is effectively net P2 in this race. And Gasly's running to the end. He's on the on the hard tires running to the end. Technically, he was in net P2 anyway. And he's now actually in net P2 because he's, well, he's actually in fourth place now on the road. Of course, we still have to stop. Aitken hasn't stopped. Verstappen hasn't, has to make another stop. Um, as um, Gasly, he's is he looking, he had a little look there, you can see with the proximity hour, he had a little look, and he's looking again, he's looking into the penultimate corner, he's trying to go around the outside, but that's opened the door for Verstappen to come back down the inside, now it's going to be the outside for him for the final corner, um, to try and get back past his um, former teammate from 2019, they're side by side down the main straight, they're gaining on us, Gasly's going to go down the inside, to try and get past us. We go a little bit wide. We leave leaving the room. He's on the inside. He's got the DRS as well. And he's going to be ahead of us into third place. We look back down the inside. We're trying to defend this position. Just fight it out. But in the end, Gasly wins out on that one. Verstappen is right behind us. And he's looking to the outside up in the turn four. We're on the inside. We squeeze him out to the exit. There's the yellow flags. There's a collision in the background between... Max Verstappen and Lando Norris are both out of this race, colliding at turn four. What happened there? Was there contact that we made with Verstappen there? I wonder. He slowed dramatically. Looked like on the mini map, no contact. He did, we just squeezed him out. He slowed, and there was a question of a collision box. And Lando Norris just came just came in too hot. Didn't expect the Mercedes to be so slow on the on the exit four, and then just absolutely just freaking. Into the side of him. Unfortunate. Both drivers out of the race. And out is also out is the safety car. Speed is out at the moment. Risk a penalty. Slow the uh, safety car. The thing we saw twice in, right, come in, at the end of the in um, Austria. We saw it twice in Austria. We're going to pox under this safety car. Eight can then from the lead. Um, Leclerc takes over the official race lead. Now it was net lead before. Now it's official race lead. Gasly will be back up. 
into second place. We're going to box as well, as I said. And I am going to change that front wing. It's safety car, so a fuck it may as well change it. You know, may as well. And everybody who has not boxed yet is going to box. But Perez is staying out. Perez is on the two stop, but he's not boxing it. That might really compromise his race result. I think he should have stopped. He should have stopped for tires. We're in for the hard tires and to change that front wing because apparently we have wing damage. I couldn't feel any. There was maybe a yeah, there was a little bit of wing damage, not wing damage, a bit, little bit of understeer in the car in some corners, but I couldn't really feel it terribly. Uh, but I mean, we changed it anyway, and we're rejoining the race in P15 under the safety car, which has been deployed for because of that crash between Verstappen and Norris. And that is a bit twitchy out the pit lane, that was. But it's coming in, the safety car, at the end of lap 15. We're going to get racing again. Leclerc is controlling the pace. He lets the safety car get away. It's Leclerc from Gasly, from Vettel, from, I believe, um, Perez up front. As we're going to get racing once again. And we can now go racing again. As the green, green flags are waving. And we've had a okay subpar restart. Not quite able to get any moves into turn one, of course. Uh, but we're going very wide through turn two on the on lap 17 here. Again, a bit twitchy on the exit, tapping the barrier. And we get back onto the road. Did we get away with that? Did we get away with that? Our gap to the car in front is 2.0 seconds. No issues with tyre wear for now. Keep taking care of them. How did we get away with that? How did we get away with no damage? That could have been so much worse. Oh, that could have been so much worse, but that's not helped us because Lance Stroll is now right on our tail in the Aston Martin. Uh, remember what I said about my chances of scoring points in this race being low? Aye, aye, aye. I knew I was going to struggle at this race, but my God. Anyway, uh, but no DRS for this race, thankfully. It's just been enabled, which has allowed us to stay ahead of Stroll as we're getting a bit twitchy on the exit. And that's going to invite the Canadian to go past us anyway. As uh, we're going to have a look around the outside to try to defend the position. We make a bit of contact with him. Is that more wing damage? I don't know with that stroll in P15. Is it wing damage? No tie concerns at the moment. Just focus on the driving. That's not what I asked Jeff at Cheers. I swear Jeff thinks the tire strategy, tire status option and the vehicle condition stat um, option is the same thing, I swear. But Latifi into the pit lane for his second stop. Gains as a place. Perez is in from fourth for his second stop. This strategy might really cost him. He should have stopped under that safety car. I do not know what the hell Red Bull are thinking in terms of strategy. I do not know, but he's going to be exiting the pit lane. Way down the order while his teammate is still leading the race from Gasly from Vettel. Alonso is still holding up Hamilton as he was in Hungary last year. Alcon is six. Then we've got the two Alfa Romeo's of 18 and Giovinazzi. Then we've got Mansu Cheetah and Sonoda rounding up the top 10. Schumacher, Russell, Stroll, ourselves, Madsman and Eilat who is side by side with Perez who's just come out the pit lane on a fresh set of mediums and um, he is ahead of the Brit in the sister Red Bull team car and is now hounding, hounding Nikita Madsman for P15 and he's going to be going for it down into what I think is turn 12. Don't quote me on that, I'm not an expert on corner numbers in Hungary and he got that move done. Um, Sergio Perez up into P15, free to come chase after us, and that's exactly what he's done. Because I feel four laps later, he is on our gearbox, we're heading through sector two here. Gonna be, sh I assume, shaping up for a move on the main straight. That's exactly what he's doing, and he's gonna get it done with the DRS. Not much, we could have defended that. He might make a mistake. But, uh, to be honest, um, yeah, not much point, he would have got past us anyway. I mean, to be honest, it's going to be difficult for him to score points anyway at this point in the race. I mean, he has joined this train oh, that's been formed by Mick Schumacher, who's about, I don't know, about a second or two back from Sonoda. Ignore the timing tower, it's having an aneurysm. Um, but Perez in P14 on the back with former teammate Lance Stroll. George Russell ahead of that, Mick Schumacher ahead of that. Uh, Stroll's got, uh, Perez is going for the move, Checo down the inside, he's going to have to switch it to the outside for the penultimate corner to try get this move done. Stroll is keeping it hung in there though, he is keeping his foot in there, but Perez on the exit gets the move done, he's up into P13, but it's going to be difficult for him to score points because Sonoda is a couple of seconds up the road. Um, so not quite worked out for Perez today, but it's more than worked out for Leclerc. He fucking benefited majorly from me just being an arsehole. 
and deciding to have a bit of fun. I was a complete arsehole. I was just being a complete arsehole to Verstappen. Leclerc, our former teammates, benefited massively from it. Little did we know we would be helping our former teammate today and our current teammate, I suppose. Leclerc exits the final corner and he's gonna cross the line. Charles Leclerc wins the Hungarian Grand Prix in season six. Pierre Gasly comes home in second and Sebastian Vettel will get on the podium for third. Um, let's not talk about our race. It was an absolute disaster. Let's not talk about that. Um, and instead focus on the fact that I think the championship is now tied between Leclerc and Gasly, and Vettel was on the podium. Let's focus on that. I'd actually agree with 18 driver of the day. I agree with that game. I agree fully with that. It's a performance to be proud of today from our Hungarian Grand Prix winners. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams, and they're certainly proving themselves. So Leclerc with his third win of the season, he won in Monaco. Finally got that elusive home race win that drivers always chase. Uh, he won last time out in Austria, and now he's won in Hungary as well. Gasly second, and now and, uh, Sebastian Vettel gets third. Perez with the fastest lap of the race. Hamilton back in the top five. When was the last time he finished in the top five? Oh, Hamilton, Hamilton, what happened to you? What happened to you? Also, big big shout out for Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon, fourth and sixth for Renault. Um, both um, both um, um, uh, uh, Alfa Romeos are in the points, well, seventh and eighth. Me mega race for them in the standings. Leclerc takes the lead of the championship, all tied up, as I said, with Pierre Gasly, 126 points apiece. We're 34 points back. I've come back from that gap this far back, this far in before. To be honest, I've come back from this kind of gap later in the season before. So it's not over, but it might be over for our teammate. But he is in a battle with, right, old, good old battle with Mark Verstappen at the moment, tied on 78 points for fifth. Um, Ferrari gain on us once again. Red Bull close in. They're only 9 point, 11 points back from us is the team from Milton Keynes. They used to be Jaguar that was Red Bull want Stuart Grand Prix or am I making that up? Can someone correct me on that? If please in the comments, because I don't know why, but there's something in my brain telling me that Red Bull, once upon a time, what is the team that were once upon Red Bull's the team that were once upon a time Stuart Grand Prix? Was that a team? First of all, first question was Stuart Grand Prix was a team, right? Second of all, did that team is that what that team was now Red Bull? Have I got that right or am I making this up? Anyway, my sometimes lack of- I can name every world, every world champion, but sometimes my F1 knowledge is lacking. Anyway, my F1 history knowledge. But anyway, we're off to Belgium next time for the Belgian Grand Prix. It's gonna be good. I always love Belgium. It's a track I do tend to go a lot better at, um, thankfully. So we'll have to see what happens. There's a few tracks coming up that I go rather well at. So it's not over. It is not over. But either way, that's the next time. I'm going to end this here. So for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all those stuff. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.